guys, what's up? I'm doing welcome to the very second episode of Confessions of a Consecrated Cutie. Yeah. <laughs> So, if you don't already know who I am, which you should, I'm one and only underscore Rory, you know, to get into the nooks and crannies of who I am, please go to the first episode, because how can you be here for my second confession if you weren't here for the first one? That's not how it works in this place, baby, okay? Because these are my confessions, you gotta start with episode one before you come to two, so that you can know what's going on, because we tell stories, yeah. You get me? You feel me? Are we together? I'm great. <laughs> so just to continue with where the story ended off last week, because this is the story of my life. These are my confessions. These are my confessions. Obviously, you guys know that I continue to see Chris because how can I stop seeing Chris when he was coming for my edges? He was coming for my edges, but coming for my edges so that I can be the real me, so that I can be the real McCoy. You know what I'm saying? So obviously I continue to see Chris and we continue having these sessions because it was towards the end of the year I was like ah let's use all the medical aid ones anyways like let's finish them all so we were at a point where we were seeing each other like every week um, I'm going to see him I'm continuing to see him and something that he realizes with the obviously that brilliant psychologist mind of his he says to me have you noticed that you have a pattern every time somebody does something wrong to you or somebody hurts your feelings you interpret it as what did I do to make this person treat me this way there's a word here <laughs> there's a no there's a word here um, that I always interpret the way a person treats me as like my responsibility like I'm responsible for the way a person receives me and I'm responsible for a person's response to me which baby that don't work at the end of the day you're not responsible for how a person perceives you you're not responsible for how a person responds to you when you say something you're not responsible for a person hurting your feelings if a person deliberately hurts your feelings or unintentional or whatever um it's not because of what you did like I, I don't know how to elaborate that properly you know what i'm saying so obviously i go back home like i do like i did in the first episode and i started thinking about Ujola and coming to the title of this week's um episode i have been single so long i'm not even a single anymore i'm an ep literally i'm not a single anymore i'm an ep because i've been it's been so long <laughs> that i don't even know how long it has been like i can't put a, a, a pacific okay girl tata when oceans it i can't put a specific time frame on how long i've been single we're gonna get to the reason why I'm bringing up being single up to the topic of every time somebody did something wrong um, I interpreted it as I'm the wrong one it's because of something that I did so to get to how I became single most people whenever they know that I am a 23 year old version they assume that I've never dated anybody I've never kissed anybody I haven't given anybody a lumps or that i mean i am purely virgin i am purely purely virgin right but like the assumptions that come with that like oh girl i always thought that you never dated anybody like i always thought that like you just like and that's okay like if that's you that's also fine but that's not my story um and i'm going to tell you my story now because that's why we're here we're here to confess right it's the confessions of a consecrated cutie right so um I come to Joburg, you know, I come to Joburg and I'm that girly, you know, when I came to Joburg, like, like guys, hey, when I came to Joburg, I had never kissed anybody. When they say Joburg is where, like, Joburg ruins you, <laughs> that's what parents say, it ruins you. 
I'm not saying I agree with parents because I don't. But I will say that before I came to Joburg, I had never kissed any guy. Um, I was really like... What people call a late bloomer, which that's a topic for another day. We're going to discuss that in another episode because this is a continuous story. But anyways, that's how I came to Joburg or whatever. And... Obviously, like the opportunities were endless. You know what I'm saying? I was definitely in my skinny girl era um, I'm trying to go back to my skinny girl era. Like I almost have a collarbone Like if you don't know how I look, please go there on YouTube and check Because my collarbone is definitely coming back, but I was definitely in my skinny era. I definitely thought I had it going on I definitely not I thought I had it going on, but I knew I had it going on because just because Just because I wasn't didn't mean I couldn't. <laughs> Anyways, I digress, right? So I come to Joburg. And the possibilities are endless. And obviously, like, I'm not going to say that I was like, oh, a hot commodity. Because I would be lying. I wasn't a hot commodity, but I was hot enough. I wasn't the KFC family treat, but I was definitely Zinger Wings. Done to Zinger Wings. <laughs> But I was definitely the KFC um, dumped wings. So obviously, like, ah, shame. Obviously, first week of being in Joburg, that's when I kissed, uh, I kissed a guy for the first time. It was interesting. It was interesting. That's all I had to say. But anyways, obviously now, like, I'm liberated. I have this freedom, quote unquote, freedom. And now, like, I just feel like after that, I was just like, you know what? I really got it going on so obviously I just kept going on and like being new guys and like making out and all that but in my heart like it wasn't a conviction of I'm not having sex because I love Jesus and I'm going to worship him with my body my whole being that was not the case I was actually not having sex because number one I was scared of getting pregnant I was scared of getting pregnant guys I told you guys in the last episode I'm old enough to be an auntie I was I, I was never old enough to be a mother like Mm -mm. no so i was scared of that but also like the the main main thing was that like i am such a lover i just knew that if i gave my myself or my body to to anybody obviously like my my first time like if i gave anybody that i would <laughs> they don't even know how to put it into words like I would love that man like I would love that man and for me I wanted that to be something that I give to my husband you know what I'm saying or, 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 or as I would say my lifetime partner somebody that I knew that I was gonna be with for life right whatever so okay I date here and there I date here and there I date here and there obviously I keep telling these niggas I ain't gonna I'm not gonna have sex with you I'm not gonna have sex with you whatever so fine I'm continuing like I wouldn't say that like the thing is i'm not a commitment girl i don't commit because i don't not i don't even think it's a matter of i don't trust niggas i just don't trust niggas <laughs> so i'm not like a commitment girl um i definitely have never been in a relationship more than six months <laughs> definitely not and it's me it's me it's not that it's me it's me it's me okay because i'm just i don't know i don't know it's i don't know okay I, I really don't know but i would say that maybe i just i don't like wasting my time and if i feel like i don't know like i'm kind of wasting my time or if we had already had a conversation like obviously like i don't want to have sex and then you were like trying to have sex with me i'm not gonna stay to to prove to you that i'm not gonna have sex with you like i'm gonna leave like i don't see the point of wasting my time I'm just that girly. I've never liked wasting my time. So that's why my relationship has never lasted. That's what I'm going to say it is. That's what I'm going to say it is. Anyways, fast forward. I rededicate my life to Jesus Christ because it's something that I had done like pretend or whatever. I rededicate my life to Jesus Christ, right? Because I got invited to home cell. Fine, I do that. And when that happened, I was in a relationship like... 
I, I was in a relationship that I got myself into because like I'm like not I was like I'm like those girl gators like I'm not gonna wait for you to ask me out like don't be slow like don't have guava bar. just ask me out right now jolla me now like why are you playing games like why are you playing games and maybe the and and in hindsight hey guess who went to in hindsight that's probably where it went wrong that's probably why they lasted it two weeks or whatever because obviously we didn't have like the chance to get to know each other really do we really want to date do we really like each other like i don't even think i really liked these niggas you know i don't even know if i really liked these niggas but anyways i digress so <laughs> then i rededicate my life to jesus and at that point right um i keep like seeing this guy first of all i was a midnight special if you know the story you know it if you don't if you the video is there on my youtube channel if you look hard enough you're gonna find it first of all i was a midnight special because that nigga would only come to me at night and that nigga would only like i don't know like <laughs> it was sucks why did that nigga never come see me during the day why did that nigga never take me out on dates but i'm your girlfriend like <laughs> he's wrong in the acrimony. whatever so that's who I was dating at the time. So um, he comes to see me, and this whole time, like I start having a conversation. I'm like, oh, you know, like how's your relationship with God? Because now I get ready, can you say? Do you understand? Like I'm just like Jesus girl, yeah. Do you know that remember when people used to call themselves the Jesus freak? <laughs> Anyways, Jesus girl, yeah. I'm like, no, how's your relationship with God? He's like, oh no, he goes to church, whatever, whatever. But like, you know, when a person says one thing, but they actually say something else. So I was like, okay. Cool, but obviously I didn't keep because that was my man. Okay, that was my man. So obviously I really keep my life to Christ in home. So so now it's time to go to church. So I probably went to church. I think it was the same week. I don't remember. So I go to church and like they at church. I'm conflicted. I'm like, damn, like I have to end this relationship. So I end the relationship. Okay, guys, I ended this relationship many years ago. And I'm still single. Like, if I had known how long I'm going to be single, I'm joking, guys. I'm joking. Don't take me seriously. But if I had known how long I'm going to be single, hi, one Luna. I definitely, I definitely would have dated a little bit longer. I definitely would have found another man a little bit just to see, like, <laughs> just to see, am I really ready to be single? You know what I'm saying? And obviously, when I first became single, I was like, okay, like, what do we do with the singleness now? Hence, like, it was my brand for a long time that i'm a single girl you know what i'm saying because i was really into trying to figure out like how can i optimize my singleness you know and uh some christian means and that season you're in your season of singleness damn like this at this point this is not season you know how grave net is not season 20 or whatever that's me in terms of my singleness that's the season i'm on right now anyways i digress <laughs> like <laughs> that's how long it's been you know what i'm saying and i was like well what am i supposed to do and and every time you see the christian goodies they always like oh i'm so content in my singleness and like damn good for you girl and i'm not saying that like i need a man but i want one <laughs> i'm not saying i need a man but i want one like even things like damn bro like when last did i have a lanza when last did i have a lanza bro a lanza and like oh my god you know how god has a sense of humor next thing you know god like places you with a man who's like strongly convinced to him and he doesn't want to kiss and still married huh <laughs> like i would literally perish but not my book but you would be done but i would pass away you know what i'm saying because just already how long it has been since i've gotten a lanza imagine how much longer if i'm saying i'm waiting you know what i'm saying but anyways, as I was saying, you know these Christian girls that you see, they're always talking about how they're content in their singleness. Like you must learn to love yourself and you 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 must self-love and you must all those things. Well, damn, like I love myself, okay? I'm that girly, I've been that girly, and I will continue to be that girly till I die, till eternity, okay? But it's like, damn, like how much of building yourself can you do? Like I'm a three-story house, I'm a mansion, okay? I'm those houses that you can control everything on your phone okay i'm that house with that lady that has a chip in her arm that can she can unlock every door with that's who i am 
that's how much i've built myself that's how much i'm aware of who i am that's how much i'm aware of my purpose and that's how much i'm aware of where i'm going i there's nothing more to build at this point if i built myself anymore there's not there's no need for a man in my life and then now i told you guys i i don't need them i want man i really do i want a man and for me i just felt like in that time i was consuming so much content of like be content be content be content and it's like yeah i'm i don't i don't think i was in a state of discontentment like i don't i wouldn't say like the longing for relationship was so strong that i'm like discontent like i was rather content like you know spending time with god bangs you know spending time with my homies bangs but it's like who am i sending my selfies to who am i telling about my day who am i having the discourse with who am i sending tweets who am i sending tiktoks who am i sending reels obviously i can do that to my friends dog like i want to, I want to be in this for life <laughs> i just i don't know you know and it left me in a place where like so none of y'all want a relationship like you really don't care about it and i almost like felt alone like why am i the only one who like yearns for this thing like why you know i mean obviously at a point not obviously but at a point it did some get toxic of like yeah i'm working on myself so i can be in a relationship i'm working on myself so i can be in a relationship damn maybe that's where i fumbled maybe that's where god said net for thy day you're gonna be single for more years and and more than that not like that anymore like i'm just at a point where i've accepted that you know what i'm going to be honest with myself and i'm going to be real with myself and i'm going to say you know what i actually miss getting numbered and you know what i actually like when when last did i get hugged by umjita dog umjita that i like obviously umjita that i like like when last you know what i'm saying like when last did i feel the butterfly my other butterflies are common sense leaving when last did my common sense leave when does the not come sense leave? You know what I'm saying? I'm just at a point where I'm being honest with myself and saying that. But that doesn't take away from obviously building and whatever. And honestly, obviously, when I'm busy with like my content creation, when I'm busy with work, when I'm actually, you know, doing the things that I'm passionate about, I would say that that longing sort of subsides when I'm with my friends, when I have hobbies, when I have things I'm doing. That need, that longing obviously subsides, but it's there, you know? It's there, you know? How long will I be? How long will I suffer? Huh? How long will I suffer? How long will I do stuff with my homegirls? And on the topic of homegirls, do you know how lonely it is when all your homegirls have men or are going on dates and you're not? Do you know how hard that is? Do you know what a long and treacherous journey that is? It's literally so hard because at a point, all my girlies were going out on dates they were dating they were whatever and i was just like like nobody wants me like guys if i'm ugly just say so come on youtube and look at me and tell me that i'm angry but i'm not because obviously i'm not it, and, and 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 to go back to to the beginning of this podcast how why i started thinking about dating was that whole thing of like when i got to a point where like you know what i was honest with myself and saying you know what i think I've worked on myself enough, as people say, work on yourself, enjoy your season of singleness, what did you do in your time of singleness, whatever, all those things they say. I've worked on myself enough and I feel like I've even worked, I've even worked on my communication skills, okay? I've worked on being direct, okay? I've worked on being the most authentic self that I can be, okay? I've worked on those things, you know, I've done what's quote unquote needed to be done in time of singleness and I've said, okay, you know what, I want to date. And when I made that decision, I thought that instantaneously now I'm going to be going on dates, I'm going to be whatever, you know. And obviously, not obviously, but I tried to, to, to be different in my approach. So before I became single, I was the go-getter. I was like the date, I was that girl, date me now. I was, I was like, so why aren't you taking me out on a date then? Hmm? You see, you're doing all this. Take me out on a date then. Call me a girlfriend then. Be my boo then. Since you want to do all this, since you want to talk. Huh? Take me out on a date then. Be my boo then. And obviously they would accept the date because it's a challenge. And I decided I decided that I obviously want to stop that. But then after I stopped that and I well, obviously I stopped that a long time ago. But when I 
decided I want to go on dates now and it's like it's quiet cue the crickets <laughs> cue the crickets and it's like why do and I got to that point where I was like why don't these people want me and back to what Chris was saying it's like I interpreted that as what am I doing wrong you know two things that I always go to how why number one I'm a boom pesto I'm fat I'm not the typical desired person you know what I'm saying as a fat girl your dating experience is not always going to be glamorous it's not always going to be the best because you don't have the best options because you're not the most desirable of the batch you know everybody always wants the best taste in chocolate okay and people will settle for a chomp everybody wants to get the Ferrero Rocher or the Lindt for Valentine's Day okay but people will settle for a piece and as a fat girl you sort of like up here so people sort of sit up for you like oh oh yeah, yeah. and okay okay come you yeah, guys know people are gonna read my comments like oh girl don't think about it that way but it's the truth ever since i've lost i've lost just a little a smidge of weight and i can't even tell you how much people have been treating me different over a smidge of weight so that was the first thing that i went and i blamed i was like oh damn it's because i'm a fat girl but then i was like i have fat girlfriends and those fat girlfriends would still be getting approached would still be going on dates and i'd be like damn so it's not the fat girlness so what is it then must be my personality must be how loud i speak must be how i love oh yeah papa guys it must be because i talk a lot it must be because of that because you know like gents love they love a mysterious girl gents love a mysterious girl i was like must be because i'm not mysterious so it was always that whole thing of like it's me what am i doing wrong you know and I don't know, like, I think I'm coming to the point. I am not there yet at that point. But I feel like I'm coming to that point of accepting that how a person perceives you is not your responsibility. And a, and people you like not liking you back is not, doesn't take away from who you are. I don't know if I'm making sense. It doesn't mean that you're not a, a mansion. Okay. It doesn't mean you're not a mansion. It just means, maybe it just means that, like, you guys are just not compatible or whatever, which, I don't know, guys. Like, I'm literally a catch. Catch me. I'm trying to be caught. Catch me. I am a catch. <laughs> catch me, I am a catch. So it got to that point. So I'm trying to get to a place where I can fully accept that it's not, it's not, it's not me it's them and just sometimes you just even if you think about just people that you meet in life you know there are some people that you just don't gel with and i think that's the way it also is with like relationships and whatever however i will say this as long as the one i want doesn't want me the one who wants me won't get me <laughs> and that's just that's just it really but it was really like a it was a knock it was a knock on my ego because I went from anybody I wanted, they wanted me too, to the people I want don't want me. Ha! Huh? Can you imagine? The people I want don't want me. And it's like, why don't you want me? Why don't you want me? I'm the whole package. You know? And it's like, uh, here's the other thing that also frustrates me. Obviously, this is a rant about being an EP. Another thing that frustrates me is these people, like, why am I good enough to be your friend, but not good enough to be your boo? Hmm? And it's like, I don't want to be your friend. I want to be your lover till the end. Whoa, oh, and it's the truth. I don't want to be your friend. I want to be your lover. Like, I'm so tired of being friends with But it's like, why am I good enough to be your friend, but I'm not good enough to be your, 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 your person? And there's always that thing of like, ah, oh, you know, you, you have to start off as... <laughs> <laughs> it's better when you start off as friends and granted like if we if we bring my history into the mix if we didn't start off as, as friends it obviously didn't it ended soon it ended soon like it wasn't a longevity thing it was like you're right here right now thing and i'm at the point i wouldn't say that i'm ready for marriage no obviously baby steps if i went from dating people for the two weeks the two months three months less than six months i can't just jump into oh i'm ready for marriage well relax so you have to walk 
before you can run okay we're not even calling it so i'm ready for like a committed relationship i don't say i'm ready for a committed relationship like more than six months six months to two years like i think i'm ready for that you know and nothing sucks more than being ready and like ain't nobody trying to catch you catch me catch me please man that's literally it that's literally the whole point of the video today of like of the video if you're watching on youtube and the podcast if you're listening that it's not it's not my fault if the person i want has got baba or it's not my fault if the person i could potentially want has got baba it's not a reflection of me if nobody is approaching me it's not a reflection of me girl I swear I'm so open like I, and, and 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 people are always like and the other thing that was is like people are always like put yourself out there put yourself out there and it's like I am out there trust me I am out there am I as out there as I can be no but I'm not as closed off as I was obviously and I'm nice and I'm great so it's just like I'm trying to be caught and trying to be caught as somebody who's aspiring to be Mrs. 100k you know I'm trying to get 100k subscribers on youtube i'm trying to be world renowned podcaster okay it's hard because sometimes when people approach me they approach me with that thing of i already know her so they don't give me the chance to one catch up and get to know them but to two like to get to know me for real like to to get to 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 see me peel my layers like an onion don't come to me like you already know me yes you listen to a podcast yes you might have watched my channel don't come with that energy like let's all start on blank slates and that's why i need to be caught right now because i before i blow up because once i blow up this is obviously going to be a bigger problem than what it is you know so was this episode just a rant about how tired i am of being an ep yes of course it was because it's the truth it's the truth and it's my truth and it's my confession but obviously the story is still being written and i do believe like i don't think that god would give me this desire of wanting a man if you know i'm gonna fulfill it obviously and it's gonna be beyond anything i can even think or imagine i'll tell you for sure like my 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 story of how i meet my man is going to blow you guys away not because i'm saying so but because i know my god mediocre story average story me never <laughs> never but you know it's the city um if you know any cute brothers that don't watch my stuff but are cute you know and like love jesus and they're just like good people like i'm willing to go out on dates like i'm ready to go out on dates i say that and then you know sometimes i'll be like ah i'm ready to go out on dates I'm serious I'm putting it on a public platform why would i lie on a public platform and i'm not a man that should lie if god said man for a reason i love you man <laughs> but anyways that's the tea like that's what's been happening in my life and that's the story that obviously god is continuing to write so let me know in the comment section below like are you guys single? Are you taken? How did you meet your person? Like, how do you feel? You know, please also leave a review if you are listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. All the likes, please leave a review. Please rate my podcast. Say it's amazing. Five stars all the way, baby. Five stars all the way. But let me know. Are you single? Are you taken? Are you looking? Are you ready to mingle? Are you relating to what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Just let me know how you've been feeling. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure that you like and you comment and you subscribe because obviously if you do that, more people get to see this and we can be a community of EPs. Who doesn't love EPs? We all love EPs. We all love EPs, right? Except the niggas that should be loving us, but we all love EPs. <laughs> That's it for um, this week. Um, those are my confessions for this week. And I can't wait for the story to continue next week and obviously when the story continues we never know where life will take us so we'll see you next week <laughs> which what story is continuing what's happening obviously we don't know but we'll see you next week thank you so much for listening um please do share with your friends if you enjoyed this episode and if you were like oh my god relatable let me share with my homegirls then share with your homegirls because who else are you gonna share if you don't have a man who else are you gonna share with you gotta share with your homegirls <laughs> 
anyways that's it um you will see me or hear me next week and thank you for lending me your ear and your eyes if you were lending me your eyes you're so blessed because i'm so beautiful and if you were listening to me go check on instagram not instagram yeah check on instagram too but you can go watch me there on youtube at one on the underscore i am amazing and i am trying yeah <laughs> anyway though i've kept you here long enough Bye. <laughs>